Welcome to Oh My God Ministries. I am your host, Reverend Anita Morris. I've come before you and it is the week of Pentecost, I would say, approaching. And um, it's the day when they were in the upper room, or the week that they were in the upper room. So we're going to read, I will read the book of Acts, coming from Acts chapter 2. And I'm going to read from one of my seminary books that I received in uh, McAfee School of Theology when I was in Atlanta um, studying, of course, to become a clergy or a minister, um, obtaining my Master's Divinity. And um, have you ever, just give you an opening statement, have you ever been in a place where you had to prove yourself or make an impression or you have to always defend yourself of your testimony in Christ or either your confidence that you have of yourself in God or the glory of God upon your life that is it true in fact God's glory on your life or is it truly God is God at work in your life and people are in awe and amazed by their witness and sometimes instead of them positive positively speaking sometimes it's ill spoken of what God is doing when it's a good and some things it said do not let your good be evil spoken of and oftentimes the trick of the enemy who comes to steal and kill and destroy our joy that we have in God our confidence that we have in God and try to uh, get us to be isolated and doubt what God is doing and what God has brought you through. I don't want you to doubt. I don't want you to get um, misfocused, misaligned, but stay the course, stay in faith, stay in hope, stay in courage, and keep the joy, keep your confidence in God, and allow the God's glory to continue to overtake you, overshadow you, and allow, allow the Holy Spirit to continue to direct your steps and to continue to guide in all truth and show you things to come. And this, my dear beloved, is what happened on Pentecost. Everyone was speaking in their own native tongue and language, but they were on one accord, and God was glorified. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that we don't have to defend your truth of your word. We don't have to uh, defend ourselves against the trick of the enemy to get us to doubt. We know that you are our defense and our offense. And Lord God, you said, resist the devil and he will flee from us. So we just thank you, Lord God, that you hold us with your right victorious hand. And we just thank you, Lord God, for your strength and your power. That's in Christ's name, through your Holy Spirit, through the love that you have placed and dispensed daily. And it's by your love we are not consumed, that you renew your love with us every morning your mercies are new every morning and we thank you lord in jesus mighty name thank god amen now in the people's bible it reads that peter in the um devotional peter full of the holy spirit addressed the crowd that gathered outside the house where the disciples met. This is found in Acts chapter 2, verses 4 and 11. The miracle of Pentecost is not that this multinational crowd understood Peter's language, but that each person heard the message in his or her own language, or I could say native tongue. The first Christian assembly was a very multicultural gathering and then the response in the devotional reads now look at your own church are you are the parishioners from every tribe the people who you come in contact with at your local assembly are they from different uh, nationality do they come from the same town or do they are they intransients or are they visitors or um, do they come from the same, um, what do you call it, ethnicities or are they people of a nation or not? 
of different nations and then they ask you why not why isn't diversity visible in your own home church and then it questions is homogeneity caused by historical or present racism so those being the same like us is it because we are prejudiced against others or is it a form of our own racism so that's something you have to ask yourself in your home church and it says if everyone at church looks like you if the diversity of the body of Christ is not reflected in the body of believers then the church fails to em emulate what is called to be because it is either a product or a victim of racism okay so we don't want to be a product of racism nor a victim of racism and not let things and other people of all different nationalities to come and visit us because we are afraid because God has not given us a spirit of fear but of love power and of a sound mind now going to the reading of the chapter when the day of Pentecost had come they were all together in one place and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind we say a Russian wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them and remember when the was the Spirit of God rested on I believe it was Isaiah he said I am I come from a nation or a family of unclean tongues and God allowed the, the um, sapphire angel to rest his his spirit upon Isaiah's tongue and had the Lord speak through him from there on and says you're no more unclean you have been clean to declare God's word and that's what that symbolizes when God stretches out a miraculous to have a, a, a a fire of his spirit upon your lips and it says let my heart not cause my flesh to sin my mouth to sin and that is oftentimes when we're so quick to judge quick to lash out quick to do that but God said I want to clean you from the inside out and so the divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them not just their native language tongue but also can you see the symbolism of God speaking through them in their own native language all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability don't be afraid of learning of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit has a mission to administer the ministry of God Fivefold ministry. He gives some a prophet, some apostles, some evangelists, some ministers, some teachers, and some gifts of miracles. All those different things that you can find in the book of Corinthians where the Holy Spirit allows the whole church to be edified. And it's nothing that we can have our, our set skills or that we are, um, we learn through our education but it's the Holy Spirit who educates us to go forth in our gift sets and the Holy Spirit's job is to make sure the whole body of Christ is being edified and that God's church is being built up in a most glorious church and the Holy Spirit also presents the gift of God's presence the gift of his truth who leads and guide us from place to place from glory to glory, from destination to destination within our own Christian journeys. And also the Holy Spirit is also a quickening guide. When we're quickening, that God illum illuminates our eyes to see plainly of what it is, is what it is. And not to be blind or blindsided 
but when we are giving the attribute of God's spirit of grace upon our lives, we're able to walk in humble confession before the Lord because of the quickening and the conviction of our lives. When it don't add up, we know how to confess. It says, come boldly to the throne of grace of God. Come boldly to the throne of God and obtain mercy in time of your need, in time of help. And so the Holy Spirit allows us the ability to come before God through Christ's blood that was shed for us, through the blood of Christ Jesus. The Spirit, and it says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability, or we can say utterance, gave the words for them to speak. It says now they were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, living in Jerusalem, the city of peace. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered. You like how you have travelers coming from in and out. You can think of an international airport where there's travelers from everywhere. And all of a sudden you stop and say, I hear my language. I hear my language. And this is what was happening. They were bewildered. Like, what is the confusion? What's going on? Because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each of them. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Lemonites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judas, and Cabotia, uh, Pontus in Asia, Perga in Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, beyond to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. Hallelujah. God's deeds of power. That's what they were speaking about. They were not talking about their themselves. They were given glorious power of, of witness of God's great deeds. Hallelujah. It says, declare the glory of God. Declare of his deeds. That his deeds are powerful. His deeds are awesome. He's awesome in power. Awesome in glory. Great are thy works, O God, and my soul knows right well. As Psalm 103 reads, O oh, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, and forget not all his benefits, and who forgives all his sin. And they were given utterance about God's deeds and his power. Merciful Lord, power God, Lord of hosts, King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am. Hell shall die more than enough. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? That they are all speaking in their native language, giving glory to God. Have you ever been in an assembly where you have a Spanish speaking orator praising God? And then you have an American praising God. Then you might have a Portuguese or what have you. Um, or uh, Italian or whatever or a Nigerian Liberian or Barbados and they're praising celebration of God's good deeds have you heard that before have you ever been in an assembly where the praises of God are going up and God is being glorified in the earth it says, but others snared. Remember I said, watch out. The enemy come not but to steal and kill and destroy what God has just sown in the earth to show his glorious power. Here's the trick of the enemy in verse 13 of Acts chapter 2. But others snared and said, they are filled with new wine. They are out of character because they were drinking wine. And again, but Peter, standing with the eleven disciples, of 
course, because you know Judah betrayed Jesus. So with the 11, he raised his voice with the 11 disciples and addressed them who snared. He said, and sometimes remember I said, you don't have to defend what God has already glorified. If God is doing the work, you don't have to defend. But Peter came and standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose. For it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And the last days it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So he was speaking the truth into existence to give articulation to what God's powerful deeds were doing to give the explanation to those who were snaring. He didn't have to, but he was unctioned to do, I believe, by the Spirit. And to bring the truth about through God's word, through scriptures. And oftentimes we don't want to always play the scripture thing. It's in the scripture to say this, it's in the scripture to do this, because also colonials at the beginning use scripture to enslave people of color, Native Americans, African Americans, and the like. And so we don't want to use it as a harm, but for our good and to work justice along all spectrums. And that is Sadiq justice. Chesed, chesed is love and kindness, what God does towards us through humankind. But Sadiq is the justice of God. And that is why it was spoken in the last days, I'm not just going to come for Jerusalem or for the Jews, but upon all flesh, all manner of men and, and, and people or women, all flesh, sons and daughters, no one's going to be without my spirit. Isn't that awesome that God did not want to leave a single one out that did not have his spirit upon them? And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And it reads also, it says, my people perish in Habakkuk because a lack of knowledge. And also, it also reads, without a vision, the people perish in Habakkuk. So we also want to be reminded that the Holy Spirit rekindles what God has allowed to begin in us because he who begun a good work in us will bring it to completion will bring it to fruition so others can see that god might be glorified that others may be edified and it says your old men shall dream dreams ere even upon my slaves or bond servants both men and women in those days i will pour out my spirit and they shall and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Of course, it reads blood and fire and smoke and mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great glorious day. All of this haven't happened, but he was mentioned in the details of the Holy Spirit's fire of a consuming fire. Okay. And at the same token, the Holy Spirit's job is to bring his spirit about upon all men where there's no barriers. There's no uh, one nation that knows God, but all nations will know God. It says, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, not one tribe or people, but everyone who shall call, who calls on the name of the Lord, shall be saved or we can say will be saved take your time during this time if you haven't called upon the lord upon the lord to be saved say lord save me help me i need you i need you to come into my heart i believe you and i accept you as my lord and savior 
if you believe that call that's calling upon the Lord and you will be saved you that are Israelites listen to what I have to say Peter goes on he's making a statement Jesus of Nazareth a man attested to you by God with deeds of power wonders and signs that God did through him among you as you yourselves know this is Peter defense his defense with those that sneered it says this man handed over to you according to the def def defined definite plan and foreknowledge of God you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside of the law outside of the Torah so the Jews were responsible of flogging Jesus and to bring him to those who were not taught in the law of God instructions of God but God raised him up having freed him liberated him from death because it was impossible for him to be held in its power grave could not hold him down as we sing songs grave could not hold you back he rose up from the grave and raised the third day that's why we celebrate Easter and resurrection because on the third day Christ rose he rose amen and then he visited among us before his final ascension and the Pentecost hallelujah it was impossible for him to be held in its power and that's why a lot of people represent and put red on or bright colors because the fiery of the Holy Spirit of God amen can't hold us back can't hold the holy can't hold the fire of God upon your lives it's just unquenchable hallelujah unquenchable fire because it was impossible for him to be held in its power that rested upon Jesus. Hallelujah. But David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so I will not be shaken. Therefore, excuse me. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul in Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. And obviously you could tell the prophecy was spoken of Jesus. Fellow Israelites, Peter continues, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day since he was a prophet he knew that God had sworn with an oath just like how we have oath of enlistments you raise your right hand or oath of appointment to do what you were set out to do and sometimes those oaths can't be taken okay and it says God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. And God is faithful to keep his word. Not like us humans who are wishy-washy or changing. But God is faithful who will do it. And he placed on his throne. He's declaring that that was Christ that he was speaking of. That there will always remain on the throne an, an heir or an, an ancestor. And here it is in this day of Pentecost being realized that he is the king of kings and his kingdom will have no end. The kingdom of God has no end. Because the kingdom of God suffers violence, suffer in the injustice. But we that are in the kingdom of God, we take it by the force of God's power to bring every imagination, every stronghold to the captivity and to the obedience of Christ. Jesus. It said, for seeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up. And of that, all of us are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. 
people speaking in their native language, their native tongue of fire. But David did not ascend into heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So oftentimes God will prepare, as Psalm 23 reads, God prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. So those who are trying to sneer at you, to attack you, to come one way, they will flee another way. It says they flee one way, they will flee, they will go seven ways. One can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousands of light. He said, I want you to sit here until I make your enemies your footstool. Amen. It says, therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, made Christ's enemies his footstool. And this Jesus whom you crucified, hallelujah, Christ and God, God in Christ, hallelujah, God has made Jesus Christ's enemies his footstool and raised them on high, seated at the right hand of God, the Father, always interceding for us on our behalf to the Father. In verse 37 of Acts chapter 2, verse 37 reads, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to other apostles, they were pierced in their hearts when they heard this. And they said, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent. And be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit so repent be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and some people say if you wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ if you wasn't baptized in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit you're not baptized I don't go into discourse how you were, but if it was done in God's faith and his act of righteousness in Christ Jesus, and whether you say Christ Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all three are one. God doesn't divide who he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and for your children. And for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him, it is for who God calls for him, that the Spirit is pouring, is ready to pour upon them. It says, and he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, this is what Peter mentioned, save yourself from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. Those who welcomed it. Not everybody's going to receive the message. Some people are make the choice, and God's given us a choice to receive it or accept the message. And it says, so those who welcomed his message were baptized that day. About 3,000 persons were added to the church, to the, God, to the kingdom of God, to God's church. Not a local church, but the body of Christ. So I have, and you have, you're born again believer and you believe Christ, you have plenty of sisters and brothers that look like me and that may look like you and that are throughout the world and very diversified. So going back to devotional, as I mentioned early, see people who don't look like you but believe on God. That is part of your Christian family, the family of God. So don't grow weary in doing well. Continue to uh, welcome each other and to fellowship with one another and spread your wings as God give you utterance to go ahead and walk your walk and talk your talk and lead you and guide you into all truth and show you things to come. That you be led by his spirit and to have the wisdom of God and to have the acceptance of, uh, uh, of justice in your heart towards others. That don't look like you and me. God bless you and may God's favor be upon you and go in peace and the joy of the Lord be your strength. In Jesus' mighty name, thank God. Amen and amen.